Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Muddy Outdoors, Cabela's, Trophy Rock, Scott Archery, Frigid Forage, Rocket Broadheads, Easton Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Quiet Cat, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Deer Grow, Ozonics, Wilderness Athlete, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. On today's episode, we're going to talk first about an extension of what we started a few weeks ago with the fruit plots, and then we're going to jump into some bow shooting. So this whole fruit plot concept is one that grabbed a lot of attention from our viewers, and it's one that opened my eyes too to the value of how you can get the most out of every acre of land on your property. I always say that if I, if I paid for it, I want to get some maximum benefit out of it from a deer hunting perspective. I either want to have an agricultural crop there that helps pay the bills, or I want to have something that feeds the deer, or I want to have something for the deer to live in, some kind of deer habitat. So if you've got these marginal acres, why not make the most out of them that you possibly can? And one of the ways we talked about doing that a couple weeks ago was with the fruit plots, planting apple trees. And Eli Cook was good enough to come and, and uh, give us a lot of super valuable advice about how to grow these. But then I stumbled across something that uh, Dr. Grant Woods had on his website, the growingdeertv.com website. And it has to do with double cropping your fruit plots. And fortunately for us, it also deals with one of the new sponsors that we've got here at Midwest Whitetail, and that's the Genesis Cedar and how you can use these no-till planters, these no-till seeders, to incorporate different crops right into your fruit plots. So you get basically uh, double the mileage out of every single acre. So rather than me talking about it, these guys did an excellent job. I'm just gonna hand it off to Grant and let him and his team take you through this whole process. As many of you know, we've been helping design and testing the Genesis no-till drill since mid-summer last year. We planted throughout the year and even in the winter when it was so cold there was no chance that seed would germinate as a way of testing all components of the drill. Finally, I was about ready to yell, this is not a test, this is not a test, when the drill showed up in Florida and the conditions were just right to actually establish a food plot. One of the most important processes of using a no-till drill to plant a plot is calibrating it to plant the right amount of seed. If this step is skipped, it's likely too much or too little seed will be planted and the food plot will not be a success. So this is really cool. This, of course, should have fall through, but you can just take this off, turned over. That catches our seed so you can calibrate real easy. So they're like, we put blankets on the ground, get her and weigh it and spill seed. And pull it out. Flip it. Now you can catch. One of the cool things about the Genesis is the calibration tray. We can actually turn the wheel just a few times, catch all the seed in the calibration tray, pour that in a bucket, and weigh it, do the process again, and within two or three times, or a matter of a few minutes, have the drill calibrated perfectly and not waste any seed. This is a huge change from the drill I've used for several years, where we had to lay a blanket on the ground, catch the seed, Try to get all the seed off the blanket and start again. The addition of the calibration tray is probably more important than I can communicate. We can literally calibrate in the field no matter what the conditions are and have an accurate result without wasting any seed in a timely manner. Adam and I are in South Florida once again. You might recall last year we came down and helped establish a tree plot and did some great hog hunting. This morning we had another awesome hog hunt, but today we're going to refine the tree plot. Trees are doing great, but we want to plant a crop right between the trees. This will be an additional attraction and help suppress the weeds. We don't want a disc right next to our trees. A much safer option is simply kill the grass, come in with a no-till drill, plant the seeds close to the trees where we have a great crop. That also leaves the sod right in place, which will help preserve moisture.
The soil where we were in Florida was extremely sandy, so preserving soil moisture has got to be job one and is extremely important to making sure this plot can grow throughout the summer. Like most landowners, our hosts had traditionally used a disc to establish food plots. Disking, of course, exposes the soil to a lot of air, allowing for rapid evaporation of any moisture in there, and all the weed seeds that are in that soil profile have a chance of kind of getting stirred up and placed near the surface of the soil, making for a perfect seed bed and rapid germination of those weed seeds. In contrast, the soil is not turned when using a no-till drill. Only a little narrow slot is made for the seed to be dropped in at the perfect depth. This does a great job of preserving soil moisture and it doesn't bring any additional weed seeds to the surface and encourage their germination. The drill goes through with the opening coulter or disc making a slot and cutting any duff out away. The second two coulters actually spread the soil slightly, drop a seed to the perfect depth, followed by a packing wheel which seals that up and ensures good seed to soil contact. This was the ideal technique to establish a food plot in an existing tree plot. We really like combining tree plots and food plots by giving multiple attractions to the same location and using the food plot to control weeds from the trees and then the trees producing fruit that's usually only available at that location. Well, it's easy to see why that's a dynamite deer attraction. You can tell we're in South Florida. This tree's already leaved out and looking great. This tree plot was established by the folks at Flatwood Natives and is a combination of nut and fruit trees. First food plot of the year for me planted, looks great, and I'm ready to go get back in a hog blind, get some more pork this afternoon. That segment turned out really well. I really appreciate uh, Blake and, and Grant from Growing Deer uh, allowing us to use that. We're gonna get one of these cedars in here pretty soon and we're gonna put it to good use on the farm and we'll show you the type of success and results that we've had here as well. Now, next I wanna talk about target panic. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can talk about with shooting a bow, but we're gonna focus in on this one topic uh, this week and I'll try to touch on some other ones uh, as the uh, Midwest Whitetail off-season series goes on. Target panic, I think, is, is uh, not well understood. Most progress that I've ever made with shooting a bow was when I made that jump and went from commanding the trigger, where you've got that internal now command, you know, hitting that trigger when the, when the pin is on the spot that you want to hit, um, to learning to shoot the bow with a pure surprise release. And that is, you don't know when the bow is going to fire. And uh, Randy Almer was the one who summarized this best for me and, and really got me thinking about it. And there have been a lot of experts in the field of archery that, that I've tried to copy and, and uh, you know, use their training methods and their shooting uh, methods. But Randy said, as long as your uh, left hand knows what your right hand is doing, you're always gonna have trouble with target panic. So that's what you're trying to eliminate is that connection in your brain between the two sides of your body. The, uh, the, main, the main problem that you end up with is not being able to hold the pin on the spot that you want to hit without having that real nervous, an anxious reaction of, of moving it out off the spot and on the spot and fighting so hard to get that timing perfect. So you end up locking uh, with your pin off the spot. A lot of people lock with their pin low and no matter what they do, they can't get their pin to move up on the spot because their body just, you know, their nervous system just doesn't accept it. And then if they do, they end up flipping it with their wrist. And I've been through this before and, and it seems like everybody that commands the trigger ends up doing it. But you end up flipping the wrist, trying to throw the arrow up in there. Uh, the other thing you'll end up with is punching the trigger. You know, the, the pin will move across the spot and you punch it real quick. And you'll see the guys that do the, the double haul. They'll go, you'll see, they'll, they'll twitch and then they'll shoot again, they're, they're fighting that uh, nervous system impulse and that now command. Now let's talk about the solution. And I'm shooting a Scott Silverhorn here. And this is a finger triggered release, an index finger triggered release. And it's gonna be really tough for you if you've been shooting index fi finger triggered releases your whole life 
to learn to create a surprise release using that same style because you're always going to fall back on that you know that that punch in the trigger but you can do it with these releases once you've retrained your central nervous system to handle it the key is to go deep we've talked about this before go deep into the trigger with your with your finger which means you got to shorten the stem of the release that way you don't have a lot of sensitivity like you would have at the end of your index finger you get in there one joint and now when you start applying pressure you can't really feel when you're putting much pressure on so it's a lot easier to create a surprise release that way and the other thing is um, you just continue to aim and, and pull aim and pull and squeeze until it goes off uh, as soon as you feel yourself pulling the trigger rather than just slowly squeezing it you're right back again where you started uh, if you want to have a real reality check get one of your buddies or you know some significant other to come up and stand next to you when you shoot and trigger the release you keep your hand on the release stem off the trigger you aim all you're doing is holding the pin on the spot they come up and gently squeeze that trigger for you and then you'll feel what it's supposed to feel like and uh, my guess is that at first it's going to shock you and you're not going to like it but if you'll continue with that drill for a while little by little it doesn't shock you as much as you just get back to what's a, just a, a surprise and then it becomes almost a pleasurable experience because it just feels right you know the bow jumps forward your release hand comes back and sets on your shoulder you know everything just feels like it's supposed to feel and uh, then that's the first step in in executing that that style of release by yourself that will eventually work but what i found to be a lot more of a permanent cure or permanent solution to target panic is to shoot a pure back tension release and i've got one in my pocket here i'm going to pull it out and shoot it here in, in just a minute this is the scott longhorn hex and they've also got the longhorn hunter which is another really good uh, back tension release that the average guy can you know can, can learn to shoot well the one thing about the hex is if you don't have your fingers on the release when you draw it there's really no chance for it to misfire unless you've got it set way wrong assuming you got it set correctly you just draw without your hand on the release put your fingers on the release when you get to full draw and you don't have to worry about any kind of premature shot the the reason that works so well is very simple there is no trigger uh, it goes off as you pivot your hand so you're at full draw pulling hard against the back wall and then you just start pivoting your hand and then all of a sudden boom it goes and that's the whole key to it and that changes your, your whole nervous system on how you react to archery if you do that for a month or even two months during the off season and you come back to your index triggered release it's a whole lot easier than again shortening the stem getting you know on, onto the second joint of your finger it's a whole lot easier than to do that squeeze aim squeeze aim uh, shot execution you want to do this on every shot that you take uh, the only time you would possibly shoot quickly is if the deer is moving through a small opening and the range is pretty close where you don't have to worry about making a perfect shot. Uh, you know, you, you may punch the trigger at that time because timing is more critical than pure accuracy. But what I've learned is you can eliminate uh, buck fever, you can eliminate all the problems that come with the, the nerves being all juiced up during the moment of truth by forcing yourself to squeeze the trigger. It takes some, some discipline at first, but when you squeeze the trigger on an animal, it slows that whole process down. You're not nearly as likely to do something crazy uh, that people attribute to buck fever. Um, that, that process of saying, okay, the only way the shot's gonna work is if I squeeze it. You know, that pin settles, everything kind of, you know, slows down uh, and, and you make a, a lot better shot consistently in the field than you would if you're sticking with that process of really punching the trigger. So that's where we're at for this week. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, what are we gonna do? Probably some uh, um, poor man plot stuff again next week. That really is the core of what we do during the month of April. So come back again next week and check that out. We're gonna walk through the actual steps, uh, what products we use, uh, you know, different ways to accelerate the growth of the food plots and, and you know, get things kicked off to a good start. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.